is to understand that you know, we have two budgets in our city, an operating budget and a capital budget. Uh, the operating budget is what we all think of in terms of police and fire, parks and rec, our health centers, our pools, all of those things. And then the capital budget uh, is things like road improvements and buildings, streetcar, uh, things like that, things that we're going to build uh, or maintain, like our streets. And so we've had a continuous deficit, not in our operating budget, but in our capital budget. I'm sorry, the other way around. Not in our capital budget, but in our operating budget. So that continued deficit is a result of the fact from 2000 to 2010, we lost 10% of our population. So two families of four left the city every day for 10 years. And so as a result, we have a lot less people who are buying property and paying the property tax, a lot less people who get here with jobs and are paying the income tax, and a lot less people who are you know, buying coffee, paying the sales tax. And so that's where our deficits are coming from. So the ultimate goal is to repopulate our city, to make it a city that more people want to live in, and work in, raise a family in, and drink coffee in. Because that's the way we're going to end the deficits. We're going to bring in more revenue. Uh, and so many of the projects that you hear about is an attempt to do that. It's for too long, we've made decisions based on how we can compete with Westchester or how we can compete with Blue Ash. And I think the question is really, how can we compete with Indianapolis, with Louisville, with Columbus? What do they offer that's attracting businesses and jobs and people that we don't offer, that we can do a better job at? So that leads us to the fact that we have these deficits. And up until now, uh, we found one-time fixes for those deficits. So when I was first elected, we had the Converges money that came back to us that allowed us to plug our budget without making any kind of tough cuts or increasing revenues. Uh, that is the proposed solution to our current deficit uh, by the city manager. They came up with this idea that in order to close our budget, that we would lease parking. Uh, 30-year lease uh, that uh, would generate about $92 million. Now, the major problem with that uh, presentation from our manager, uh, I think a big part of everything we do in the city is missing. From the streetcar to this parking plan uh, to other big ideas. Uh, and that is any component of how are we going to communicate this to the people? How are we going to get buy-in? How are we going to explain why we're doing this? Get feedback, make changes, uh, so that when you do something big, uh, and you're doing it because of budget deficits or you think it's gonna grow our city, uh, when it actually comes for a vote, people have had input, they feel a part of the plan, and they get why you're doing it. That has not happened with the streetcar or with the uh, parking uh, And so I think some of my colleagues in the administration uh, are often surprised when the public feels overwhelmingly against an issue like this. Uh, but it's not a surprise to me because we haven't engaged them. We haven't sold why we want to do something. Uh, and so while I voted against the parking plan and do think that there is a better solution, I actually don't think it's as horrific as the media and some of my colleagues and opponents uh, for city council this year have made it out to me. Um, but we still have to balance our budget. So I voted against the parking plan, but I was the only member of council to present an alternative plan. Uh, and my alternative plan, Plan S, uh, did two things. It made uh, some tough cuts and it increases revenue. So we spent $100,000 in 2012 on something called priority-based budgeting, which actually did go out and hold meetings and hear from people about, you know, what should the city be spending money on? And what shouldn't we be spending money on? And from that feedback, we, we put these core kind of areas of focus where people thought we should be spending money. And then we took every single line item from our budget, every program, not just the police department, but every program that the police department does and match it up with those values. 
and then listed every single program uh, from top to bottom, the four quartiles of the most important priorities of the people to the least, the least, uh, the least amount of priority. Uh, and so we spend a lot of money doing this and effort. Uh, I think we should use that. And so when we're making the tough cuts, we can look to this quartile system and start at the bottom and say, you know, these are the cuts that people said were least hurtful. So my plan did that. It took five million, does that. It takes five million in tough cuts and starts at the bottom of this priority-based budgeting results and comes out to five million dollars. The next thing it does is take our casino revenue that's not currently allocated, about seven and a half million, uh, which the, ma the manager of the council has not allocated at all to solving the budget crisis. Uh, it takes that to plug the budget, and then it also puts two ballot initiatives uh, on the ballot for people to vote on. One would be a $10 a month, a maximum $10 a month garbage fee. Every other major city and our suburban city surroundings all pay something for garbage. We don't want to, uh, but is at least hurtful. And then also a 2% increase in our emissions tax, so 20 cents on a $10 ticket. If we did that, we would balance the budget this year. And by the way, the garbage fee and the emissions tax, they are generated every year. And those cuts we made were permanent cuts. So we wouldn't be looking at a deficit every year if we actually made cuts that weren't one-time sources, which is what my plan does. Unfortunately, the parking leasing plan was rushed to council without any consideration of an alternative plan. The votes were there. Uh, as you know, uh, it was challenged in the court. Uh, a temporary restraining order was given. That temporary restraining order this morning was made permanent. Uh, the city will likely appeal that decision. Uh, but the question is, in the meantime, will the deal fall over? So will Guggenheim, which is the, the New York-based company that is financing most of the deal, will they pull out? Will we have to, if we're going to lay anyone off, we have to balance our budget by the first. If we're going to lay anyone off, we have to do that. We have to send out notices by May 1st, so two months in advance. So will the appeal process not be ready? Uh, will the decision not be made by May 1st? If it's not, then we have to send out notices. Will this force a majority of council to actually come to the table and say, maybe this isn't the best way. Maybe Seelbach and the others were right. We should consider balancing our budget by making tough cuts and increasing revenue and actually come to the table with an alternative plan that doesn't include three or 400 police and fire layoffs. Um, those are the questions uh, that are, are on the table today as a result of the decision by the board this morning. And so the next week, maybe day, maybe days ahead of us, uh, we're going to see what comes together. And well, I'm committed to finding a way to balance our budget without leasing our parking. You know, five years from now, we may look back and say, those, those cuts were really tough. The increase in revenue was tough. But for five years, we haven't had these continued deficits because we actually made the tough decisions. Uh, and then, you know, the parking, leasing of parking, I think that there is some merit to really consider leasing our parking system with taking out all of the concerns that everyone has about the rates increases, the extended hours, the New York company. I think that there is a legitimate conversation we should have in the course of time uh, that we would lease to the Port Authority alone. And that money generated wouldn't be spent in two years, because the deal is 30 years, uh, but would be spent on economic development to help 